What up, YouTube? I'm Anwar. I'm Keith. And welcome to the War Room. Yes, sir. What's up, baby? Man, man, Another day. Made, yep. it, made it happen, huh? Yep, yep, yep. That was work. That oh, was cool, man. That's what's Beautiful up. day out there. Yep. You catch, you catch any of that shit yesterday up at the Capitol? Uh, no, no. I went down there. I went down there. I was, I was surprised. There wasn't a lot of traffic yesterday. No. But I, I guess they went in there and they, they... For those of you who don't know, um, we've been going through this uh, protest yeah. at the Capitol regarding our quarantine with this pandemic and... Governor Whitmer trying to keep everybody in the house and just getting a little bit of resistance to say the least. Yeah. From a I certain mean, I've never seen people, people so eagerly to possibly die before. It's just unreal. I mean, I've got some other footage of going down there, like I said, but um, this doesn't sound look like it's going to yeah, stop anytime soon. They had guns inside the Capitol building. You in what fucking world, dog? Like, oh, bro. Uh, uh, Black and brown people could die. No. We'd be dead before you. Born and raised. Been in Lansing my whole life. Really diverse city. No. Nope. And I know for a fact, if me and any of my homeboys went in there, with even just a pistol, or just in the vicinity of Man, that, even with a, that... With a bobblehead, they could blow you up. I go in there with a slingshot, it's going to be a problem. And... Yeah, but if you just go in there... It's going to be a problem. <laughs> so, you know, this whole group, Looked like a militia. Mm -hmm. um, went in there and they surrounded the place. They, they pretty much bum rushed the door, for lack of a better term. They're all in the rafters, all on the stairs, all in front of security, yelling in the police officer's face while they're trying to maintain composure. Yeah, you know, no masks on as far as the individuals, the protesters yelling. I mean, it was absolute chaos, and I don't think it's stopping anytime soon. So it just seems like. Every time they go up there, Whitman's going to be like, all right, we're just going to add a couple more weeks to this shit. Yeah, she's think, not, she she not don't care what y'all are doing. And shout out, to, shout out to her for, yeah. for doing the best that she can under these circumstances. As you call her in Detroit, Big Gretch. Big Gretch. Mm -hmm. Big G, huh? Yeah. Okay. You Big know, Gretch. so under these circumstances, I mean, it's going to be we, a situation. We, uh, we photoshopped pictures of her with the buff song. Oh, oh I got you, you got to get one of those. She validated. So we can have one of those. She yeah. validated. Yeah, she's honorable now. Yeah, that's what's up. So yeah, like I said, man, under these circumstances, she's doing the best she can. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of people that are not going to be happy, not going to be That's what I don't understand. It's like, what do y'all want her to do? This ain't never happened in none of our lifetimes. What do you want her to do? I don't get it, bro. I don't get it either. But... You know, we'll just keep updating you guys on this because I'm right here on Ground Zero. Yeah, it's literally blocks away from my hood. Shout out to the West Side, as always, Genesee yeah. neighborhood, you know, mm -hmm. all that. But yeah, um, you know, on to other things. Mm -hmm. Right now, like I said, there's no sports going on. Nope. But the hottest thing right now in regards to the sports world is the Michael Jordan documentary, or the Chicago Bull, excuse me, documentary. Known as the Last Dance, mm -hmm. um, the 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 curtain call for the last run of those what ninety seven ninety eight Chicago Bulls. Yep. And for me, that was the time. You know, I remember living through all of that. I remember how a lot of that kind of unraveled, and it's just, it's just kind yeah. of a refresher for me. You know, I've been watching the Pistons because I'm a true bad boy since eighty seven. So I've been since five years old yep. watching them. You know, put in that work. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
So to see how that kind of played into it and everything, man, it's it, right now it's just, it's an excellent documentary. I suggest mm-hmm. anybody that hasn't watched it, you tune in. Yeah. And right now we're up to episode four. Now, with you being a little bit younger, yes, sir. you know, a lot of that you don't really get to reference. Yeah, I wasn't even born. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, what was that, 90? That, that was that? 97, 98. Oh, 97, 98. Oh, okay. I was, I was about three or four. I, See, thought, so you were I thought, like, you were talking about, like, the 90s. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, well, just even at the beginning. You would have been young. I mean, I was too young to remember. That whole, that, that yeah. whole run the first time and the second time, you'd have been too young. Yeah, yeah. man. So, right now, you seeing it. And, you know, seeing it from yeah. a historical perspective, what are your thoughts right now? I mean, I feel like it's stuff I already knew. Really? Well, some of it, except like the like the inside, the locker room and all that. But I feel like I've always been somewhat of a student of the game. Like, I've always, you know, watched old Lions clips, old, you know, Bulls clips. I mean, if you're great, damn it, I didn't watch you before. You know, I didn't did my research. So, I mean, it is nice to see because you got... It's good for like my nephews and shit because they ain't never, they ain't never get to, they'll never understand. Yeah, they never understand. Never understand. So I mean, I like it though. Right, I and, get it. And to your point, and um, like I said, man, growing up in that era, yeah, and living those moments, man, it's uh, it was surreal, man. It's a trip, man. I mean, I remember '88, man, and we, uh, you know. We had our, our moment of ascension as far as the Pistons yeah. getting past Boston. And then, yes. you know, during that whole time, we was knocking Jordan's head off. And, I, and I'll say this, too. For those that are old enough to remember, if you were truly a bad boys fan, mm-hmm. I already know it, was, it was fuck Jordan, straight up. Like, fuck Jordan, <laughs> fuck yep. Chicago, mm-hmm. fuck all of them. Fuck I love his, Fuck his shoes, too. Fuck everything. Fuck everything affiliated with Chicago on that level of basketball. So that's how... You tell me, if you, if you was uh, in Detroit and you had on some George, you seen as a fucking clown. Yeah, exactly. It was real. Fuck. It was We drew that line in the sand, yeah. and it was bad boys, and we Classic was all... Classic basketball, man. Absolutely, man. And it was it was incredible. And, yeah. I mean, of course, Jordan was amazing. That That's undeniable. Yeah. Pippen was always my boy. But, man, it was, it was such a... It was dope, man, because if... If not for him having to go through us and all those trials and tribulations, he wouldn't have never made the ascension he made, oh, no. you know, in his you career. Add, 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 adding on that muscle, you know, getting in the weight room. I mean, dude, we beating the fuck out of him. Beating the fuck As, out uh, of him. Like that uh, 21 Savage scene. Yeah. Beating the shit out of him. Like, right. He didn't want, no. I mean, that's where the Jordan rules came from. We yeah. just completely will neutralize him. I like how by, they used to deny it. Yeah. The whole time. And now, I mean, they kind of, like, a couple years ago, they kind of like, yeah, yeah, we get right. it. But I kind of wish they would have never said that. I'd be like, what, what is that? Well, that, right, because it was a different physicality yeah. in the game. Because see, see, right now, we just playing physical. We ain't got no rules. And so, you know, what's, what's interesting is being an older cat, you know, I was fortunate enough in a lot of realms of life, and we'll be able to delve more into this as we, you know, continue to make these videos. I've got a point where I remember seeing a lot of greats early on and then seeing as I got older, seeing the wave and how things have been able to progress, whether it was basketball, football, technology, video games, all the movies, all this different stuff, the internet. Yep. Um, so to see, um, you know, going from that era into how basketball is now, man, it's night and day. And uh, yeah. it's just so crazy because for those of you that are too young to know, that Jordan, that Jordan era was was unparalleled, man. I, I mean, I can't put into words like those movies they show you. But if you didn't live that time, you really don't understand, yeah. man. Michael well, Jordan was like as I much as I hated him, I can never deny he was yeah. incredible, man. Yeah, like like I told you the other day, there are Kobe's a legend, LeBron is a legend, Shaq is a legend, uh, Magic Johnson is a legend, Isaiah Thomas is a legend. When it comes to Michael Jordan. I don't put him in the legend legend category. He's a ba- he is the basketball guy. He is literally in the category. Of that is the basketball guy. Absolutely. I mean, they said his presence, seeing him is not all the was, yeah. all the other legends already knew he was yeah. going to be a problem. But you know the reason why they stopped playing the way they did. I mean, kind of was the bad boy Pistons. I mean, you look at it like, damn, this is football basketball. Yeah. Ain't nobody really want to see that shit. So we're going to take it with a hand checking. It's kind of like football. 
Like, if you notice, football, as more they make the rules for the offense to light up the scoreboard, the more viewers they get. So if it's not all this physicality, the more points you can score. So, I mean, that they ha- they kind of had to. Because right. after Jordan left, it's like, oh, man, all right. Right, because, I mean, now you look at the game, to your point, there's no hand-checking. The game is designed yeah. to stretch the floor, they space everything They could never out. body slam Jordan. Close line. Oh, man, I mean, you suspended. I mean, just, I just remember some of those, the rivalries as far as. The rib- I feel like the rivalries are better. Oh, I'm talking about back in the day. Yeah, so, oh, without the, there's no, you there's tell, no rivalries like, now, man. That's just a joke. Motherfuckers know? didn't really fuck with each other. Them guys straight up, and it would be years after retirement. And they're, it's still. They're like, eh, you know, that's all right, yeah, we'll, like, yeah, we'll exchange man. pleasantries. But no, like, them guys are still, the fact that we talk about, like, Isaiah and Lambeard and. They're talking about it as if it's still beef now. It's still this it elephant still is. in the room. Right. You know what I mean? But it's still this elephant in the uh, room. Yeah. That, and shout out to Lambeer. Shout out to my man Lambeer, dog. I love him. He's like, I don't give a fuck. Lambeer uh, was one of the We did, oh, we did and what? Right. And <laughs> one of the one of the first stretch like forward center type guys. Lambeer had a clip, man. Lambeer used to pull them threes, you know? So man, shout out to my Pistons, man. Yeah. That's my favorite team. I yeah. loved it, man, because uh, I always loved that logo, that Bad Boys logo. Yeah, that was oh, sweet, man. God. The whole skull and I used to have a bone. Bad Boys hat and a t-shirt. And I think I gave away the hat and I messed up the t-shirt. Oh, man, I got to get another one. Man, that stuff would have been worth so much. Man. I got to get and another one. I, wish I, I mean, kept... they still got the, you know, yeah, I got to get another one. But it's something about those originals, man. But yeah, it was. it's, it's a great series so far. And like yeah. I said, man, just remembering watching a lot of that stuff. Now, mind you, during this time, we don't have... The internet that we have now, where everything is instantaneous, the social media, yeah. where you're able to delve into these guys' personal lives and what some of the stuff that was going on behind the scenes. Um, at that time, the ESPNs and the different sports medias, they did a pretty good job staying on top yeah. of that as far as, um, you know, some of the inner workings. But a lot of that stuff we're not finding out until obviously now. So guys are finally getting out of the game, been retired 20 some odd years, and then they're finally kind of giving you the story. So, um yeah, it's, it's it's fascinating to watch how this this thing, because I remember so much of that. I mean, we're talking all of a sudden Scotty's going into that season, excuse me, going into that season, and they were so dominant on that second go around, 72 and 10 and all these different yeah. things. Um, to hear talk before the season even started that they were going to blow this shit up, I was just, it blew my mind back then. I'm like, damn, they can, what do you mean going to blow this up, yo? You guys are... You guys, nobody's fucking with you guys on any level. Um, mm-hmm. It seemed like you they legitimately could have won another one or two, maybe even three more rings, the way they were playing. I would say about one or two more. Yeah, legitimately. I mean, guys were still in their prime and for them to be like, all right, well, let's go ahead and cash Scotty in right now while we get value. Yeah. And fuck that whole thing up and Ego, get rid man. of Phil. And, Ego. Yeah, Jerry Cross, even now watching that, I remember those type of things, hearing that about Jerry Krause and yeah. how he was, he, you know, he, he had a skill asshole. set. He made, yeah, he made phenomenal moves to allow them to, to get where they got. But he wanted he, credit. He got in his own way. Yeah. And I just remember that, like, wow, this is crazy. Because at this time, while all that was going on, Michael's contract was getting ready to come yep. up. Phil, they didn't want to pay Phil. And then they finally gave Phil the money. And I remember around that time, Michael Jordan was the first guy and are and, sh- and deservingly so he got thirty million a year. Yeah. So that changed that changed the game, and that's what kind of took us to the forefront of where you, you know, start seeing these multi million like, dollar contracts. Well, no, he got thirty million over in one full contract. That's Ron right. make thirty million. A year. He made thirty four actually. Right. Year. But I, if I remember correctly, I have to look at it again. 30. I think he that was only a one year deal. Mm. Or at one point, Jordan made like thirty million annually, mm. and it was towards the end of that whole situation. I mean, now that's a normalcy. Now you, know, you got super max. You yeah, know, like crazy you said, LeBron shit, made 34 a, a year. It ain't nothing. Scotty was severely over underpaid, and I knew that back then. You're top three or four in the league, and you signed that long-term deal only for $18 million. And, you know, and obviously Rodman. And you're welcome. If it wasn't for us fucking that shit up and getting yeah. rid of the worm, because we got rid of Chuck Daly on some bullshit and blew that whole... Well, once they moved us out the way, because I remember yeah. that series. When I seen that and they came out there in that first game and they just kind of imposed their will, I said, oh, shit. We'd be lucky to win one game out of this series. And they put us right up out of there. Yeah. That was the beginning of the end. Chuck Daly gets ready. They get him out of there. Chuck ends up in Orlando. Yeah. And then everything starts to unravel. Now Dennis is kind of... 
going off on some other stuff because he was so close to Chuck Daly. And, you know, I'm thinking, all right, just retool a little bit and get us another go. And at that point, they just started getting rid of guys. And, yeah, and here we are, man. Fucked it all up. Fucked it all up. And then they were able to go on that run. Now, I'm going to ask the crowd this. And hopefully somebody will chime in mm-hmm. and, and answer this question. So when they won the first three, then Jordan retires, uh, unfortunately, from the untimely death of his, his father passing. Mm-hmm. Do they, if he doesn't have to retire and say they play Houston back to back, shout out to Houston 713, yeah. my fam down there. Uh, yeah, they they should, should, yeah, Houston won 95. Houston won back to back. 95 right? and Clutch shit, City, right? as they called it, because I had the shit on VHS. Oh, it's man, a tape for some of y'all. Orlando that's too. Orlando and New York. They lost to them too. And they beat New York too. So uh, my question is if Jordan doesn't retire, do they win those two championships? And then if so, how many do they win in a row? And what I mean by that is if you look at the Spurs runs um, from just a couple of years ago with Mono, Ginobili, Tony Parker, and mm-hmm. Tim Duncan, when you start to become dominant to the point that you're going to the finals or playing playoff ball every year, that's an additional at, at most 20 games a year. So you add... I think they would have broke down soon. Eh? See what I'm saying? So you look at a situation, if you make the finals four years in a row... That's 20 games, so 20 times 4 is 80. You're essentially playing five seasons in four seasons. It's a lot of wear and tear. Yep. So do y'all think that they would have won more than – they would have won five in a row, six in a row? Would they have won eight in a row? How many do you think it would, they would have won? Do you think they would have beat Houston? That would have been a hell of a series because that yeah. was a hell of a Houston team at the time with Hakeem Olajuwon, Otis Thorpe, mm-hmm. Robert Ory when yeah. – Everybody thinks Robert Ory's his bench player. Man, Robert Ory uh, used to get busy. Who, who the fuck else? Right? Sam Cassell, yeah. Vernon Maxwell. Yeah. Um, they were loaded, man. Uh, Kenny, uh, Kenny Smith, yeah. Kenny the Jet. Then they ended up getting Drexler, you know, a year or two later, picking up mm-hmm. Barkley. And that's ultimately all those moves is what segued Pippen ended up in Houston for a while. Yeah. And that's finally when he got the money he just deserved. Mm-hmm. Um, and rightly so. And I'm going to say this, too. Should have been had that shit. Should have been had that shit. And... Everybody is, you know, Michael, Michael, Michael. Mm-hmm. Um, I was always a but, Scotty guy. Scotty was my dog. He man. never won without him. He never won without Scotty. Yeah. And another thing, too, those couple of years that Jordan did retire, Scotty carried that team damn near to the finals by itself. And a lot of people don't remember that, man. He was balling out of control. So shout out to my man Pippen. You were like one of my favorite players of all time, and you never truly got the credit you deserve. And I'm glad that Michael really acknowledged that. Yo, yeah, that I can't dope. do this without Pippen, straight up. Yeah, that was dope. Man, so, yeah, I'm, I'm loving the series so far. And, yeah, just watching how this is going. And Rodman, yeah. and he's, oh, he's a wild God. boy, man. He's Rodman, something else, right? Rodman is, uh, I don't know, man. I, That's I it. Think That's he, it. <laughs> God damn, man. The word. Right, right Shout out to the word, for, uh, right? The word, man. The word, dog. Greatest rebounder that I've ever seen. One of Nuggets. the best defenders. Arguably the best defender yeah. that I've ever seen. i never seen anybody that would literally do anything. He'd grab your ass if he had to make it. Just to make you feel uncomfortable. Pinch you on the butt a little bit. Real yeah. cerebral. Just kind of fuck with you in the head. Yeah. And just be an irritant the whole game. Mm-hmm. And Rodman can guard multiple positions. I remember even I mean, later in his career, he was guarding Shaquille O'Neal down there in his prime. Rodman's got. He got Rodman had yes, ended he up won having two, he won five. He got two with the Pistons, right? Two with the Pistons. And then he got three with the Bulls. Yep. And then yeah. and then you know they ended up sending him off to San Antonio, and we got Sean Elliott, who yeah. was an All Star at the time. Yeah. He didn't pan out at all, but he ended up having some kidney issues and mm. stuff. Yeah. Man, we just you know that was that's what I'm saying. Um, I've been fortunate enough that I grew up in a time that I've seen so many greats early on, and then even the guys now. So when we start having these discussions about who's better, LeBron or Jordan, and these yeah. different guys, for one, it's hard to compare because, like my man said, you're dealing with a different type of game. We're talking about yeah. a defensive game. Game was predicated on you know imposing your will. If yeah. you come in the lane, you're going to get caught up in some bullshit. Where now the game is predicated on we want to see scoring. We want to be able to see the defense doesn't get the credit they deserve. And that's even, like you said, in football. So, you know, having these different things, man, to have a reference point, it you got to have it. Because for guys that are like, oh, LeBron's better, you can't say that. You didn't even fucking – you don't know Jordan. You didn't see Jordan. Yeah. You can't even have a real yeah. legitimate argument because you're coming from a place of watching film. I watched – Jordan did whatever he wanted to whenever he wanted to. I had a question. Now, we see how LeBron gets criticized in a loss. 
now win. What what were those two games? How many many points did Jordan drop when he played uh the Celtics? And he still whooped his ass. Right? It was like sixty three or sixty nine. Yeah, yeah. When he literally put the team on his back, like you can tell the difference how people criticize Jordan and then how they criticize LeBron. If LeBron did that, ain't nobody giving a fuck. You lost. You fucking. You fucking got it. Very true. Michael did that. Oh, he's Jesus in fuck in in, in sneakers. It's like, okay. but that piss that uh, Boston team was incredible. I mean, they had. I think that was. But I was watching uh, Bears, right? Undisputed, and he said this is very true. He was like, okay, yeah, Jordan got through the the, the Celtics team, but I want you to name one person on that team you think is better than Kevin Durant. Like, really. As far as that Celtic team? Yeah. Larry Bird. If Larry Bird and Kevin Durant played one on one, I'm sorry, I think I think KD gonna light his ass up. Are we up. hand checking? Even then, I still think he's gonna light his ass up. I think he's gonna light his ass up. Man, yeah. That but, tall. But I'll say this, you know where Kevin Durant got his game from. You know who his favorite yeah. player was? Larry Bird. There you go. And so, then like you he's also another mid range guy. He he But God, I mean if you look but, at Who's all right? Not to cut you off. Yeah. Who's better, the originator or the innovator? And that's what I guess that's what we got to come to. You know, I mean, it's like the when we used to talk about the Kobe MJ thing. And we're going to talk about that here coming up on yeah, the then, um, If you look at who's more athletic, definitely KD. Oh, of course, of course. So would Larry be able to even keep up? No, he's not a better shooter than Larry Bird, though. Kevin Durant can shoot, but. Yeah. I don't think Kevin Durant was a better shooter than Larry Bird. I don't know. I, I just Well, his career ain't over, so we won't know yet. We won't know yet. But, but Larry Bird was I a saw dog. a post that said if, if Larry Bird and KD played one-on-one, they would bring back segregation to what KD did to this motherfucker. I don't know. You got to check. You know what, real talk? If you look at his numbers at his age compared to LeBron's numbers, his numbers are damn near identical and in some degree better. I don't have the stat line up. Yeah. But well, he was right up there. Well, yeah, they're averaging a triple double. So I mean, I, I well, get it because always play with three Hall of Famers. It's easier, and I'm not even a big LeBron fan. Like I think Kobe and Jordan is better than LeBron, but I'm just saying I do notice how you know the difference or how they critique both of them. Oh, this is a different scrutiny. Yeah, I will say this because I mean I think Jordan is better than LeBron. But LeBron, it's hard because there's nobody else Mm -hmm. I've ever seen that has came into the league with all that pressure. I mean, you know, he's coming out of high school. They were talking about LeBron coming in out of middle school. So for him to have all that, the King James, all these different things that were going on Mm -hmm. with his uh, situation and having to live up to the hype, for him to come in and, you know, Play at the level he's played his yeah. whole career and to be dominant and do the things he's done, carry all these teams on his back, get to the yeah. finals early. Obviously, he got steamrolled uh, yeah, by the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah, but I mean, fuck, he didn't, yeah. have, I mean, he didn't have a lot of That talent, was still right? a, a great feat to do. But to be able to, I've never seen anybody be this dominant for this for long. This long. Yeah. And the reason why I feel like LeBron still technically probably is the best player of the game. He's right up there. He's obviously there with Kawhi Leonard and some mm-hmm. other guys you want to yes, throw in there. After KD, yes, yes, right. The fact that he's this old, 36, he's my age, 36, yeah. 37, yeah. and the fact that we're discussing that he's potentially the best, in my opinion, makes him the best because he he's that old. No, Jordan wasn't even this dominant at 36 years old. Jordan started to break down. I don't, maybe Jordan may not even been in the league. I know well, after he retired, he ended up going and to the Jordan, Wizards. And, and, then, def- and, and even in the Wizards, he still averaged about 20 a game. And he went to the All-Star but game. In but in Jordan's defense, because of the different rules, like let's say if LeBron played in Jordan's era, does he have this? He ain't never been hurt for real. Does he have that longevity? I doubt it. Yeah, because of the punishment. Because of the punishment. It's a very valid point, too. I mean... But this is why when we it's fun to have these discussions. Yeah, you never know. You don't know yeah. because we're not... We're comparing literally apples to oranges. Yeah. The only thing that makes this stuff um, 
relatively similar. We're talking about food, right? Mm-hmm. Basketball. Yeah. But in, you can't really compare the two. They play two different positions. Mm-hmm. Um, the defense was different. The way the formats of the, the league is different. Yeah. We're, we're dealing with everything yeah, spaced out, stress for centers are shooting. I don't even compare Jordan and LeBron. I'm more compared to Jordan and Kobe, and I'm more compared to LeBron to Magic. Yes. And I will, in another and Larry. Way, yeah. Know. Those type of guys. Um, yeah. and, and then I would say an early Jordan to me would be a D Wade early in his career. Mm-hmm. And then as far as the finesse and, and more of the mirroring the game, definitely Kobe. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But like I said, Kobe is getting the blueprint from Jordan. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he put his own stuff into it. But, oh, yeah. You know, um, it's going to be interesting to watch that because even then, I remember watching, I've watched so many of these drafts. I remember 1997, and this is kind of the beginnings of the, the high school basketball guys. I mean, one of the other guys that really kind of put that on the map was um was Sean, was Sean Kemp. Yeah. You have this influx of all this high school talent coming in. So mm-hmm. you got Kobe, you got Kevin uh, Kevin Garnett. Um, they had, uh, who's another one that was a pretty good one? Um, I can't think offhand, but for every... Uh, Kobe and Kevin Durant and not Kevin Durant, uh, Kevin Garnett. You have yeah. your your Leon Smith, your Cole Young, your Youngs. Yeah. You had different guys that did Jonathan Bender yeah. that struggled to make the league. Al Harrington had a hell of a run too. Mm-hmm. But um, I remember watching that and it was all this speculation because you know these guys are pretty much man amongst boys when they're in high school. Yeah. But you see the skill set and they're like, man, um, yeah, this Kobe Bryant kid can be pretty good eventually. He's got a hell of a skill set coming out of Philadelphia, Laura, uh, Laura Marion. Um, but every, it was so much uncertainty because it was so high risk, yeah. high reward. Because who did guys. they trade to get? They So traded, that's what I was going to uh, get yeah, to. They traded, so uh, they traded name? with the 13th pick, the yeah. Charlotte Hornets. Mm-hmm. for. Um, they ended up giving Charlotte uh, Vladi Divac. Yeah, I'm going to right there. What's his name? Was it Eddie? No, Eddie was there with him. It was Vladi Divac and somebody else. But at the time, Vladi Divac was a hell of a player. Mm-hmm. Hell of a people center. Were, I know people were like, what the fuck are they doing? Yeah, and that's what a lot of people in L.A. thought. They were like, why would you give up Vladi Divac for this young this young high school guy that it could bring a lot of uncertainty? Because mm-hmm. the last guy to truly be dominant coming yeah. out on a high school level yeah. was, was Sean Kemp, and then before that, Moses Malone. Yeah. But to see now, and, oh my God, about. boy Charlotte, y'all finesse the fuck out of yourselves with hindsight. Yeah. Oh my God, and Kobe is one of my favorite. Like I said, I yeah. didn't really get to see Jordan like that, but I saw Kobe. Remember That's Kobe. my favorite player. Remember Kobe coming off the bench because he was playing behind Nick Van Exel and Eddie Jones, mm-hmm. and they had Elvin Campbell, and this before they ended up getting Shaquille O'Neal. And, and you know what? Speaking of that, it uh, when I was, would watch Kobe play. And people are like, oh, he don't pass. It's like, wait, are y'all really watching Kobe? Like, yeah, he'll have his moments where he just say, oh, fuck it, I'm doing it myself. But if you think about the Redeem team, he wasn't like a big score on that until they truly necessarily needed him. And then he was assist to rebound. If you look at uh, the championship, their last one, when they beat Boston, he didn't have a good game as far as scoring-wise. Yeah. What did he do? He got a shit ton of assists and shit yeah. ton of rebounds. Yeah. So it was like people always trying to make it seem like that's all he could no, do. Yeah. When it wasn't like he was a fucking dog and his defense was out cold. Yeah. It was a maturation process and I never early on was really the biggest Kobe fan. Yeah. Um I but, as, Kobe fan but as he got as he got older and, you know, he got, you know, yeah, into his like, probably late twenties, early I mean late twenties, early thirties, I to, had a true appreciation when for it him. When it comes to Kobe, I got one of the most unpopular opinion ever. People are like, well, he had Shaq. I'm like, how many did uh Shaq win before he met Kobe? Yep. We saw what happened when he did have Kobe. He had Penny Hardaway. Got Penny Hardaway swept. was my dog. That's another yeah, one. Got Love his Penny Hardaway. Got his ass swept. Got ran and ran into uh um, Houston. Yeah, Houston. And they had a tough time with Chicago when Michael Jordan finally came back mm-hmm. uh, wearing 45. Yep. Yeah, man. So, overall, I'm loving it, man, because it's just it's just a trip down memory lane. And I just oh, yeah. remember, like, going back to the point of just remembering all that uncertainty and just, like, what's going to happen to this team? I remember going to, like, a store, and I seen an a old sports magazine, and I had Michael photoshopped in a bunch mm-hmm. of different uniforms about, well, what's going to happen after this? Is he going to end up in New York? Is he going to end up... Uh, I think Toronto might have been on the front. It was a couple of different markets. Yeah. Maybe the Lakers. I could have seen him in New York. Yeah. There was um there was some 
opportunities there, man. And uh, yes, that's one of those things that was that's always going to be kind of puzzling to a lot of real sports fans because they fucked up a good thing, and obviously that was the case based yeah. on what the players said. They were like, yeah. "Man, we not we're gonna ride this shit to the wheels fall off." And once they ended up really blowing that up, they made a a, a bunch of uh, bad decisions, I guess, that you end up they drafting. They didn't really make a really, really good decision until they got Derrick Rose. Until they got Derrick Rose and then the Jimmy Butlers uh, yeah. and, and Joe Kim Noah. Because yeah. I remember these were high school guys. Uh, they picked up, they drafted Eddie Curry first mm-hmm. and then Tyson Chandler back to back. That was yeah. another one of the drafts. And then they ended up picking up, um, I know they ended up having Eldon Brand at one point. Ron Artest was a hell of a player for yeah. them early on. Jay Williams was going to be a hell of a point guard for them uh, until he messed his leg up his... I guess it was, I would have said, the beginning of his rookie year. And, you know, he almost killed himself. He almost had his leg amputated. Mm. So, yeah, it's it's always funny to just, you know, you sit and you watch this stuff and you take it, how this move can ultimately end up here. Yeah. And so, I mean, that it's an awesome thing. And it's I think it's so cool that they recorded that whole yeah. season. They knew. You know, they knew. And they, it was there was an intimacy to that where you – you're getting to see a lot of the personality, man. Jordan's something else, man. When yeah. you're kind of hearing him talking about his stuff about yeah. kind of letting Robin do his thing. And he mm-hmm. like, you know, yeah. we had to go get his ass out of bed. <laughs> get out of bed because my man was doing his thing with Karma Electric. Oh, yeah. yeah. Shouts out to Robin. Shouts Taylor, out man. to the worm, dog. Yeah, man. Uh, man, worm was out there getting it in. Karma oh, yeah. Electric is she's bad still, as fuck. Yeah, she's still fine. So, I mean, hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey, the worm, the worm, yes, yeah, sir, the worm. So yeah, man, y'all, y'all definitely tune into that. Yeah, and like I said, definitely. man, uh, if y'all can leave a comment, women, what do y'all think? How many would they have won in a row if they didn't have that gap of two? Yeah. Oh, another because, one, one on one, play bird or KD. Hell yeah, that's another one too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we was we was talking about that, and then there was a couple other things we wanted to lock into real quick before we get up out of here. Yeah. Oh, you know what I noticed too? What was kind of crazy? Right. I see that this G League thing in the NBA is taking off, mm-hmm. man. It's a game changer now. NCAA, you fucked around. You should have paid them players way earlier because now all these youngins is like, fuck that. Why am I going to go to college? Because they don't want to go to school. Yeah. I'm not gonna they let don't you, care. I'm not going to let you pimp me yeah. when I go to the G League, make potentially up to a million dollars. Yeah. Well, I just my heard skills. they just said, now you can make money off your likeness. But, I mean, they're still not even compared to the money that the school is going to make off you alone. So, I mean, but... I, a day late and a dollar damn. short, man. It's too late. Y'all should have did that a, a long time ago. Go to G League. I mean, why not? I mean, you've already seen a couple. I've seen the top guy win. We had a kid that was supposed to go to Michigan, Isaiah Todd. He's going to mm-hmm. go to the G League. And there's another kid. I don't remember his name. But, man, shout out to y'all, man. I'm loving it. Yeah, make your money, man. Man, that's a power move. Yeah. You get to make some money. Yeah. You get to cultivate your game. Mm-hmm. And there's still a potential that you still could go back to school if you wanted to. Yeah. It's a win-win. So, you know, Adam Silver, I will say, man, as far as what he's done in the commission game. He's one of the best. He's one of the best. I mean to, to carry the torch from David Stern mm-hmm. and see his vision and take it to this to this next level, man. Yeah, this is a power move right here, man. So now you got the NCAA sweating because they're like shit, man. They're gonna have a lot of guys jumping shit. Yeah, and for y'all youngins, man. I mean, if y'all want to go to college, I mean, college is Ooh, a phenomenal for the experience. experience. Yeah, if, I mean, that, if y'all yeah. not, if it's not necessary for you to get your family out of a circumstance, yeah. and then also go to if you feel like. You're really not ready, and you want to. I still think the best competition would be in college. Yes. So I mean, if you're really not ready and you want to make it, and you you know, go to college. Because honestly, in, in a lot for of cases, right now, I for right, right now, for right now, because you got to think about this too. Um, you know, you're 17, 18, 19 mm-hmm. years old. You can't get into the club unless you, your team is just that plugged. Yep. Um, you're dealing with with grown men. You know, a lot of adults, and there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that, a lot of money, a lot of different things that you're going to have obligations to because there's all this money riding on the line. Yeah. It's a maturation as far as your body, your mindset, and what have you. If you don't think you're going to be ready to hang with the big dogs, then, yeah, go to college, man. Get your, tighten yeah. up your game, you know, and then you can, you can, um, you have a bet one of the best, you have to get have better coaching. You have better, like you have that, better yeah. grooming, and then you'll be able to, um, understand what kind of comes with this this stardom? Because yeah, yeah, you might have stardom in high school, obviously with the AAU stuff. Yeah. But it's a different it's a different parallel. I mean, a different um, 
a whole nother entity when you're dealing with college with, with all the money and all the, yep. the rivalries and, and, you know, all the tradition and expectations. So, yeah, man, it's a hell of an opportunity for y'all, man. So, yeah, it sounds like it's a win-win. Yeah. You can't really go wrong either way because even though, yeah, you may not make the money early on, if you're still able to have a phenomenal college career and you still make money, it's still a win, right? Yeah. So, yeah, shouts out to them, man. I think that's that's awesome that they got that going on. Um, also, yeah, if I finally listened to that baby. I'm liking that album, too. Yep. Blame it on the baby. Mm-hmm. That shit's pretty sweet. Yep. Uh, I'm fucking with that. I remember when he came here, I want to say like a year or two ago, he came to the Prime Music Fest. Yeah, somebody, I, I think somebody tried to snatch his chain. He had to punch somebody in the face. I don't yeah. know why I keep messing with Dude, my man. Leave that man he alone. already didn't show y'all. He, he knocking people the, for y'all asses. He knocking people the fuck out, but y'all want to keep fucking with him. So shout out to Baby. Yep. I fuck with your music. I like your little movement, man. You got my man, uh, Stunner for Vegas. Yep. He's sweet, too. Yes, yeah, sweet, um, I'm liking how you putting all your people on, man. So salute to you and all what you got going on, man. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, yo, we um, I think we're gonna wrap this one up, man. Yeah. I don't really have too much else to go into. We got some other shit in the works. Yeah. Um, like I said, man, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Hit that mm-hmm. like. Hit that subscribe. Um, leave tell a comment. A friend, tell a friend. Man. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Yeah. My dog, I appreciate you coming through yep. as always. Course, Shout course, out to my man. He out there on the front lines. Yeah. Out there. Moving them packs. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Always. 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 But yeah, y'all be easy and y'all be safe, man. Yeah. Peace.